the training program is essentially broken down into four separate parts. So you have level one training um, is introduces everybody to the basic concepts they need to understand to operate one of these boats in an offshore environment. Um, it's quite an intense week. We've got to introduce all the basics in the space of six days on the water. So there's a lot of information to take on board. People can sometimes find themselves getting slightly overwhelmed with the amount of information that we put forward. Um, but the important thing for a crew to remember at that stage is that every successive level of training is really consolidating and slightly building on that very first week of training. We do have some crew with a lot more experience, but actually, generally it's the crew who have very little experience that find it a little bit easier to adapt to our methods of operating the boat. When they come back to their second week of training, we put them through uh, a one-day industry standard uh, RYA offshore sea survival course. When they finish that, they come back for their uh, practical element of the training, the on-water side of the training, which involves them going out sailing for about five days on the water. And the objective on level two is really just consolidating everything they've learnt on level one, but in an offshore environment. So the boat doesn't stop in the evenings. They're sailing in watch rotors and it's really introducing the concept that sailing the boat is only really 50% of what life on board is about. And the other 50% is about trying to sleep while the boat's pitching and rolling, um, making sure they manage clothing properly, cooking meals, keeping the boat clean, making any running repairs that need doing. So level one and two go nicely hand in hand. Level three, it's really a case of introducing to the crew, um, this isn't just a cruise around the world, this is a race, and how can we make the boat go faster? How can we build on team performance and the team dynamics? We also introduce the spinnaker at that stage. They may have seen it once or twice in training before, but there's a very heavy spinnaker focus. And the final level of training is once the crew have been allocated to their individual teams, and have been allocated as skipper, we get pretty much all boats out on the water. Um, and there's several days of going through uh, emergency procedures and drills, such as towing, fire, flooding, um, casualty evacuation, things like that. And then the final stage of that, it's normally a sort of 48 hour uh, race around the English Channel, where the teams can really start to pit themselves against each other. And it's the first opportunity they've had to sail on their boat with their skipper, with their teammates. We have a lot of teaching aids such as things that we call the wet notes, um, which stipulate step by step every single uh, step in an evolution or a process to change a sail or, or to make a sail bigger or smaller or something like that. We also ensure that all the instructors that we use are um, highly experienced instructors. Most of them are yacht master instructors. Um, they come from a very strong sail training background. And what's really important is they're, they're able to adapt their teaching style to suit individuals' learning needs. The other thing that we do is we always have at least two, sometimes three instructors on the boat as well. The crew don't move on to their next level of training until we're satisfied that they've got to the required level to move forward. So there are occasions you'll often have maybe um, every couple of courses there'll be a person that needs to go back and repeat that course um, and we won't move people on to their next level of training until we feel that they're, they're safe. We're not trying to turn crew into yacht masters or be able to take charge of the vessel or anything like that. We're trying to turn them primarily into safe and efficient offshore race crew. One of the beautiful things about the race is where you have such a disparate group of individuals all coming together and formulating into a hard-working, efficient and high-performing team. When you get that right as a race skipper um, and when the team get it right and you can help sort of nurture and guide them to that place, it's one of the most rewarding things you can do with your life.